365.com. I have a really short, fun one for you today. We're going to learn how to play Moby Dick by uh, Led Zeppelin. Now, uh, this one is short because um, it's, a, it's a three and a half minute drum solo or so, pretty much. So I'm going to transcribe the whole drum solo for it. No, I'm not going to do that, actually. But we're going to do all the guitar. It's got really cool guitar riffs at the uh, beginning of the track and then a couple, a few solo breaks. Um, so first minute of the song, it's got some really cool guitar stuff in it. And then at the very end, there's a quick little section too. So we're going to cover all of Jimmy Page's parts there. We're, we're going to stay away from Bonham's parts. All right, so um, before we do it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell so you know when I release a new video. And check out my Guitar Academy, of course. It's at guitarlessons365.com. It's got all my guitar courses covering lots of topics from technique to ear training to guitar tone improvisation, all sorts of styles and levels. Uh, it's all there, it's either a complete beginner course. So come on over and check it out and uh, join the community. All right, so let's get going on this. I am in drop D tuning. For those not in the know of what that is, uh, take the low E string on your guitar and tune it down a whole step to D. So now that's a low D string, then A, D, G, B, E, standard after that. So just a low E string down to D, and that allows you to get that really, really cool little uh, groove going. All right, so uh, from there, we just have kind of a cool little riff that's really based around a, a blues progression. Uh, sounds kind of like this. So that's going to start low E, oh, okay, low D now. I'm probably going to call that a low E a lot because it's just habit. But. So we have, after you hit that um, low D open, you're going to pick the fifth fret on the A string twice, pull off to the third fret. Then come over to the fifth fret on the low E string. Low, there we go, I told you. So, you go, so just go five, three, five, three, Five, three, zero. So, so it's all together. Uh, remember, you can use um, whatever fingerings you want. So. Now the last time, instead of going at the end there, uh, so four times you're gonna play that in a row. So in the last time, instead of going five, three, zero, go five, three, five. And I grab that now with my uh, ring finger. Cause then we need to start the, uh, the next one. So. All right, so that that part of it is going to be done twice. Fifth fret on that low D string, and then play, you're going to hit the fifth fret twice on the D string this time. Pull off to three, 
and then after the open D. So we'll... Then jump back here to the first fret as you get that open string ring and you can jump back to the first fret of the A string. So we have one, three, one, three, one, and then you're gonna jump back over to start the riff over. At that fifth fret on the low D string. So we have this. Repeat. Don't do that, whatever that was. So that last time, instead of going, you know, to, to start the riff over, so after you've done it the second time through, that last note is gonna be back to the open D instead of here. And when you do that, that starts over the previous riff that we did. So we have four times on this riff. Twice on this one. Back. Now we're gonna do that, so we go back to the original riff, we do it two times. Now that last note again, we're gonna change out. Instead of going five, three, zero, after you've done the riff two more times here, we're gonna take it to the open A string. So it's gonna go three, five, three, instead of the open D, it's the open A string. And then we have this next riff. All right, so that is starts with um, the open A string, and then you pick the uh, seventh fret on the D string twice, pull off to five, over to seven on the A string. Then jump back over to the seventh on the D for a couple of times, then back to the seven on the A, then play five, seven on the D. So all together, real slow. And then we have this. So that is, there's a quick little, just probably an upstroke there on the open D string. And then you're gonna slide in the fifth fret there on the D and like pick it five times. Then pull off to the third fret. Over to the fifth fret on the A string. So from the original riff. And then we're gonna end these riffs with. And that's a, a bend at the fifth fret on the G string. And then you're just gonna pick it without the bend. Then seven, five on the D string, over to eight on the A. So all together, what we just learned. Then we start that first riff over again and we do it three times. And then we have some lead breaks that start. Now the lead breaks, there's, we're, we're doing the, the riff three times and then he stops, but there's a guitar that's overdubbed on it because you can tell because the riff doesn't completely stop before the, the, the overdub comes in. But when you're just doing it live, you can just kind of bail out on the riff at the very end. That's what he would do live. So now that first lead break is... So that's gonna be a bend at the 12th fret on the G string. 
And then you just hit the double stop at the 10th fret on the B and the high E twice. And then we have a bend at the 12th fret, bend and release again at the 12th fret on the G. Pull off to 10, over to 12 on the D, and then roll over to the 12 on the G and play 12, 10. So we just. One more time, slow. And then we're going to end it with these four notes. You're going to go over to the D string, play 10, 12, and then play 12, 10 on the G, and slide down. So, so basically, we're going to play that first riff three times and go into that lead lick, and it'll sound like this. And then we go back into the riff a couple more times. Actually, just once, and we have this next lead lick. So this is um, you're going to be uh, kind of holding the tenth fret there on the high E string, and then the you're going to be bending up the thirteenth fret on the B string. So playing. The so you can kind of do the bend. And then play the high E string, the tip fret there a couple times. Do it a few times, a couple times. And then, then you have a bend at the uh, 13th fret. And then he does this kind of backward rake. So what I think he's trying to do, even though you don't hear all four notes there clearly, distinctly, um, especially the second time he plays it, but it sounds like he's trying to play the 10th fret on the high E string. Then the 13th on the B, pull off to 10, and then over to um, 12 on the G. But it sounds just more like... He's playing 10, then 13, then 12, and that you don't hear that 10 so loud. The first time you hear the lick, you kind of hear the 10 a little bit more, maybe. So, and that's just done with a rake that you're raking uh, up on the string. So you just... It's like a little sweep. So he does. So he does that bend and then he does that lick. Now I like adding the ten in it. So that would be like up, 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 pull, up. Or you can just rake across the three notes. So whatever you think sounds good. So uh, we basically have that. Now from this, when we jump to this room, all right, so it's fun stuff. So we, we jump back to this. And right towards the end of that riff, we do this little legato lick. So that's doing. You're gonna pull off. You're gonna pick three on the high E, pull off one, pull off an open string. So just like, and then do the same thing on the B, and then do the same thing, but four two zero on the G string, and then three two zero on the D. So we do this. And then just repeat that again. And then at the, the second time across, you're gonna add now three two zero on the A string as well. And then you go back into that riff. So we kind of had this. And then here we have our last little lead fill, which is uh, probably the hardest one to hear. Duh. But he's, he's got some solos where he throws that in there, which I'm sure sound pretty familiar to you, that, that lick. So what he is doing here is he's going across uh, D major arpeggio. So he starts with a he's slightly here, the fifth fret there on the A string. 
And then um, you play. Uh, it's D major, but you actually it's, you go across D major six arpeggios. Uh, sorry. So, we so what we're gonna do is pick that fifth fret there, slide into the ninth fret on the um, A string, and then play seven nine. You're gonna hammer seven and nine on the D string, and then he gets to the uh, seventh fret here. Um, on the G string, and he's gonna play that a couple times. So it does. And then he basically just repeats the light. So he's gonna slide up to the, uh, it's kind of repeating, repeat the, what we did here, an octave higher. So you're gonna slide into the 11th fret, hammer 10 to 12 on the B, over to 10 on the high E string, this part especially is a little jarbled on the recording. And then you have a couple of bends at the 13th fret there on the on the B string. So with I'm sorry. Real slow. So that ending where we go back to that A riff. And we're just gonna end it with this D power chord as the drum solo comes in. So it's just open D, uh, fifth fret on the A string, seventh fret on the D. All right, so then we have this uh, drum solo, uh, which you know your band can easily cover this. All you need to do is have the world's greatest drummer as your drummer. Easy stuff. All right, and then he does his thing for a while, you go have a drink, and then you come back, and uh, when the band comes back in towards the end of the track, we play each one of those riffs that we did earlier one time. So we have this. More drums, because he didn't get enough the first time. And then. So we basically just went through every single riff one time. Um, so the, the D, the G, and the A riff. And then we get to the. Those ending chords. So after. One. Which are just simple major chords. So it's, you get first you hit the low E, it's a D major to start. So you hit the low E. D string with it, fifth fret on the A, and then you're gonna bar the seventh fret across the D, G, and the B. And then take that down two frets to a C major, obviously you gotta kill the sixth string now. And then to an A major. And that's it, the track just ends suddenly. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. So actually a really, the beginning of the, the song is really fun to play, it's got some fun riffs. Some cool little uh, lead breaks that are pretty challenging too. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon with another one from guitarlessons365.com.